is your Feel Good Breakfast Show here on S3. Let's put things into perspective. Two years of stop-start schooling, isolation and spending more time in front of screens has resulted in an increase in low muscle tone among young children. Now this morning we chat to Nikki Bush, human potential and parenting expert about parents can help their children improve their muscle tone in fun and creative ways. As always Nikki, it's so good to connect with you. How are you doing this morning? Fine and you, Jamie. I'm so good. And I think this problem is not just in the children, but also in adults. I mean, we are constantly on the phones, we're in front of the screens, but why is low muscle tone such a big problem in society? So low muscle tone really refers to our core strength. And in essence, our ability to hold ourselves up uh, with strength, with intention, and not to slouch. And if you think about children in particular, they've been spending so much time in front of screens over the last two years. And when their parents have been working and they're not at school, they've been gaming, they've been lying in front of the TV, not running and jumping and climbing and kicking and hitting balls and uh, being on bikes, etc. because they've been isolated, they've been contained. And children are actually born to move. They're born to move and the body is the architect of the brain. So if it doesn't happen in the body, perhaps it's not happening in the brain either. And so there is a direct link, Jamie, between core stability and a child being able to write neatly and balance their letters on a line, being able to read with focus and intention. Because if you are constantly battling to keep yourself upright in a chair in the classroom, you can't concentrate on what the teacher is saying. You can't concentrate on the lesson and the instructions that are being given because you're fidgeting and you see children leaning on their elbows or both their elbows or slouching in their chairs. And I think you're going to see a lot more adults doing that in boardrooms and in their offices too. For sure. And I get that on so many levels. It makes perfect sense what you're explaining. And I, I mean, you're not saying that kids should go out there and start doing dumbbell weights and core exercises, but how can we as parents help it, um, our children improve their core stability and strength in this way? I think we can make it a lot of fun, Jamie. So let's look at the ritual that you have every evening of taking your children down to the bathroom to brush their teeth before going to bed. Instead of walking down, why don't you do wheelbarrow walking? So that means your children are on their hands and you are holding their feet and you are pushing them along like a wheelbarrow and they are busy walking along with their hands. So what are they doing there? They're engaging their core strength, um, their tummy, their solar plexus, their arms, because what we're talking about in terms of um, core strength is the gross motor uh, muscles of the body, the arms, the legs, the tummy, the neck, the back, the buttocks. So all of those things need to be stimulated in tandem together. And if you just think of that wheelbarrow walking down to go and do your teeth, it A, becomes a family ritual. B, it becomes something fun that they look forward to. And C, you're engaging the whole body in that activity. You're starting something new now, because I'm picturing Luca every day after dinner. Mom, let's do this exercise, and he's going to expect me to do the exact same thing. So if I come with a broken back tomorrow, I blame you, Nikki. But let's talk about the academic level that kids need to be on. How does muscle tone impact this? So firstly, concentration. You know, if they're having to focus on their body too much, then they're not focusing on what's going on in the classroom. And handwriting takes an enormous amount of coordination. It's not just the holding of the pencil and the pen in that pincer grip, but it actually relies on the stability of the whole arm, the shoulder girdle, and your child's core, which includes actually the hip girdle as well. So to sit comfortably in a chair, to be able to hold your body in position, to be able to have the control at the extremity means you have to have that core stability. So we go back to the center all the time. And it's incredibly important that our children learn how to engage that core because we want them to be able to focus, to concentrate, to be able to learn to read, to write. Mm. You can see a child who has... Uh, low muscle tone um, 
battles to balance their letters neatly on a line in their books and they might have real scrawly handwriting and there's something else we need to talk about in terms of of core strength and muscle tone and that is what is happening around children's mouths so that's a second question we need to get to Mm, we're definitely going to get to that and unpack a bit more about low muscle tone around the mouth. So we'll be continuing our conversation with Nikki in a bit. Stay with us. It's my feel good show. Welcome back, everybody. We are continuing our conversation with human potential and parenting expert Nikki Bush around how parents can help their children to improve their muscle tone as well as how this impacts them academically. Nikki, are you still with us this morning? I am, Jamie. You touched on it briefly, but let's expand on this a little bit more. How does low muscle tone around the mouth actually affect children? Well, Jamie, I visited a preschool recently and I looked at all these little ones who were actually born in lockdown, a lot of them. So they're two years old and some of them three years old. They weren't born in lockdown. But so interesting to note how many of them had low muscle tone around the mouth, which is really a result of a couple of things. Firstly, they haven't been socialized a lot because they've been in isolation. So they have only had their parents for company. And secondly, they have been wearing masks so when they've been in preschool they've often been in masks and their teachers have been in masks and when it comes to developing speech children need to copy what they see and they haven't been able to see other people's mouths moving enough so there's a mirroring that goes on uh, in terms of any kind of movement but speech in particular and when we talk about speech and children it's about bringing the muscles, the cheeks, the tongue and the lips into play. It's a very complex movement. And children need to both hear speech and watch speech happening in order to create what we call the motor plan. So how the brain actually plans the movements of every part of the speech making apparatus in the body. Um, and when they haven't practiced enough, when they haven't spoken enough, they develop low muscle tone. So you kind of see this, uh, you know, this, this kind of um, soft mouth, shall we put it that way, because the muscles haven't developed. But there's lots that we can do to help our children to regain that, um, that, that muscle control around the mouth. Let's get into that. Let's get into the fun stuff. How do we as parents make improving low muscle tone for speech fun and creative so that the kids can enjoy it? Well, first off the bat, and it's a very cheap activity, is go and buy some bubbles. And bubble blowing is really good for exercising all those muscles that are good for speech. So if you just try that now, um, Jamie, pretend you're blowing bubbles, and we go. And can you see how much you are exercising the mouth? Okay. Mm -hmm. And any kind of whistle. So go and trawl through sports stores and toy stores and try and get different kinds of whistles that have different shapes. You get whistles with a, a round um, opening and you get whistles with a much more oval opening. And so a sports whistle has more of an oval, oval opening. Get balloons, teach your children how to blow them because they're exercising the entire system for speech from the lungs to the solar plexus to everything that's going on around the mouth. And then straws are really useful. Get your children to blow into the glass of water, put a little bit of sunlight soap in there and they can create bubbles, put a bit of food coloring in and it's even more fun. Make sure they don't drink it, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then the other thing you can do with a straw is give them a little cotton wool ball and get them to crawl on the floor with the straw blowing the cotton wool ball down the passageway. And in that way, Jamie, you're not just exercising the muscles for good speech, but you're also exercising the whole body for the core strength, the low muscle tone in the core that we were talking about a little earlier on the show. So everything we do, we need to just make sure our children are switching on their bodies again by doing physical movements. 
And something I've learned as well is actually putting a peanut butter on a spoon. So you'll ask them to lick the spoon with the peanut butter and they'll have to try and take the peanut butter uh, off their palate with their tongue. It's also a great exercise for the kids to try to really encourage creative speech. Uh, so that's something I would uh, mention as well. Definitely, great idea. And here's some really simple things to do. You can fill, get them to fill one cheek with air and then move the air from side to side like this. And they love doing things like that. And then you could get a tongue depressor and hold the tongue depressor up and get them to touch the tongue depressor with their tongue. So they'll be pushing against the tongue depressor. Uh, and then you hold the tongue depressor to the side. Uh, uh. And so actually getting them more aware of how they are working and moving the cheek, the lips, the tongue, the jaw in terms of good speech. And of course, chewing gum will go a long way. A speech therapist often uh, tells a parent to go and get chewing gum and let their child to chew, let their child chew on chewing gum for a couple of minutes a day. Got it. And I, I believe you have a Parenting Matters with Nikki Bush Facebook group. Tell us a bit more about it. I know that if uh, parents wanted to reach out and needed more advice, they could contact you on that, correct? Yes, absolutely. So there's always information at NikkiBush.com, but there is a closed Facebook page called Parenting Matters with Nikki Bush. And if you want to continue this conversation with me there, I am happy to chat. I'm going to do that just now. I'm about to sign up, go onto Facebook and make sure that I'm part of that group. Nikki Bush, as always, so great to connect with you. Thank you so much for taking time to speak to us and the rest of Mzanzi today. Have a wonderful day further. Thanks, everybody. There you have it. For more parenting matters, be sure to check that Facebook group, Nikki Bush, and you can get all that advice at your fingertips.